All right, section two is going to be graphing linear equations in two variables. We have three forms or three ways of graphing it. One is finding intercepts. This is called standard form. And the third way is called the slope intercept form. All right, so let's begin. When we talk about intercepts, it's where the line crosses the X and Y axis. Remember the horizontal is the x-axis and the vertical is the y-axis. Everything from the right of the origin is positive. Everything up is positive. Everything down is negative. And everything to the left is negative. And they go Horizontally goes from negative infinity to positive infinity, negative infinity down to positive infinity up. So the intercept method. Let's say we had a graph that looks like this. We know that the line crosses the x-axis at negative three, and it crosses the y-axis at positive two. So what are their locations? Their ordered pair? No. Negative three and two would be right here. Each point, each dot on this graph. Negative three and zero. Negative three and zero. Very good. And zero and two. Excellent. Yes. Remember, these four things are called quadrants. If the dot is on the axis, they're called 
interquartile points. Points that are on the axis, either X or Y. They're inter interquartile because they're between two quarters. Quarters. There was, there was a question on homework that says where is, for example, like negative three and zero. Where what quadrant is it? Then I put no quadrant. No, no, yeah, it's not. It's it's between two quadrants. Yes. Good, good answer. Yeah, excellent. So noticing this, the x-intercept, this is the x-axis, so that's the x-intercept, its location is negative 3, 0. So the x-intercept is at negative 3, 0. The y-intercept is at po uh, 0, positive 2. Let's look at another graph. Here's another line. This is line one. This is line two. So this is the line one. And this is the line two information. So what's the x-intercept of line two? The x-intercept. Where is the x-intercept? On which axis? The x-axis. The x-axis is this one. Where is the line cross the x-axis? We're only looking at line two. Where does it cross the x-axis? Three zero. There's the x-intercept. So this one is at three zero. Where's the y-intercept? On line two, where's the y-intercept? Zero, negative four. So, to find the intercepts. For the x-intercept, and then for the y-intercept. How do you find the x-intercept? Look at, look at the two points we have there. What do we notice about both of those x-intercepts? What do we notice about the y-intercepts? With what? Start, zero is here. No, All, every point starts at zero, 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 and then you build it from there. No, what, look at the intercepts, what do you notice? Here's the intercepts, here they are. What do you notice about them? Okay, that, that, that means that changes. What else do you notice about it? What's the same between the two points? There's not that much information in there. You really can't see it. What's the same in the two x-intercepts? Hmm. 
You can't see it with your eyes closed. What's the same on the two X intercepts? You guys don't see this? You don't see that? Well, yeah. What, where are the zeros located? Yes. On the x-intercept, you have to cross the x-axis. So the y's have to be zero. So the first thing you do is set y equal to zero. And there's, there's, not, there's not that much in these things. The parentheses can't be right. The, the comma can't be it. It wasn't negative three, three. So the only thing left in there was zero. And you all didn't see that. So set y equal to zero, get rid of all the y's, and then solve for x. And what you're gonna be left with is the x-intercept, which always has a zero in the y. Okay, let's take a stretch here. What do you notice about the y-intercepts? The x's are zero. So to find the y-intercept, set x equal to zero and solve for y. That's all there is to it. If those exist, then Put the two dots at those points, one X intercept, one, connect the dots and you're done. That's the intercept method. Let's look at an example. Three x plus two y equals six. Whenever you have an equation that looks like this, where the x and y are on the same side and it equals some number, that's called the standard form. Because you may be asked to put your final answer in standard form once you find A and B. You have to know what it looks like. X and Y are on the same side. And there's another thing. A has to be positive. Nope, if you had this, That's not standard form yet because it's negative. So what you have to do is change all of the signs. Now it's in standard form. But when there's a problem like that, is the first thing you gotta do is change the sign? If it's in this form, yeah. If it's, it can ask you a question like this. So put the answer in standard form or rewrite this in standard form. How would you do it? Everything? No, not everything. What does standard form look like? So that means you have to have no X's or Y's on that side, everything else on the other side. Do you have that? So what do you move? Why would you move the 3y? If you move the 3y, it's going to be on this side. If you move the 2x, it's going to be over here. And it's still not going to look like this. You have to have the x and the y on the same side of the equal sign. If you move the y and move the x, you've done anything. You've done nothing except move them. So which one do you have to move?
X and Y have to be on the same side. And the non X and Y be by itself. So which one do you have to move? You really can't see it. Are X and Y on the same side? Is the number by itself? So which one do you move? The 2X, of course. How do you move the 2X? Since it's positive, you subtract 2X from both sides. X and Y on the same side. Standard form. Not really yet. Because in front of the X, you cannot have a negative. So you got to change all the signs. That's standard form. It's not that impossible. You put X and Y on the same side. I'm not trying to trick y'all. It's just straight, straightforward. I mean, X and Y have to be on the same side and A, whatever's in front of the X has to be positive. Okay, with this example, it's in standard form. Graph, graph using intercepts. All right, intercepts. We have the x-intercept. What are the steps to find the x-intercept? What's the first thing you got to do? Set y equal to zero. Read the, I put the steps up there for a reason. They're a guide, they're instructional. So we have three x plus two y equals six. First step, set y equal to zero. 2 times 0 equals 6. 2 times 0 is 0, so it's gone. Second step is what? It's all for x. Get the x by itself. I have to get rid of the 3. Divide both sides by 3. 6 divided by 3 is 2. So the x-intercept is at two zero. Now we gotta find the y-intercept. Use the same equation, three x plus two y equals six. First step, set x equal to zero. Three times zero plus two times y equals six. Solve for y. Since we're looking for the y-intercept, we're solving for y. Three times zero is zero. Two y equals six. Divide by two, y equals three. Since we set x equal to zero, and y equals three, that's our y-intercept. So the x-intercept's at two, the y-intercept is at three, connect the dots, and we have the graph.
No, no. Three X minus Y equals three. For the x-intercept, first step is what? Set y equals zero. Why would you set x since you're looking for the x-intercept? I mean, I don't know. And then do what? After you set y equals zero. So we have three X minus Y equals three, set Y equal to zero is the first step. So that's gone. So we have three X equals three divided by three. So X equals one, which means one comma zero is the X intercept. The y-intercept, set x equals zero. And solve for y. 3x minus y equals three, set x equal to zero first step. So that's gone. So we have negative y equals three. Change the signs. Y is negative three. Connect the dots and there's your graph. What do y'all think? So far so good? But there is a problem. What if you get a decimal or a fraction. So far, we've been pretty lucky getting all these solid numbers. Let's look at this example. No, that won't work. So to find the x-intercept, we set y equal to zero and solve for x. So we have two x plus three y equals nine. Set y equal to zero. Oops, two. So we have two x equals nine. X equals nine over two or 4.5. 4.5 is pretty hard to graph because we don't know if you have to be exactly between two other points. Or what if it was 7 over 16? So here's the problem. Of course, we can find the y-intercept in this case. 2x plus 3y equals 9. Set x equal to 0. 3y equals 9, divided by 3, so y equals 3. But the problem is the x-intercept. 
we sometimes it's not feasible to use the intercept method. If it's not feasible to use the intercept method, if you can't use the intercept method, then you have to use another method. Like the slope intercept method. The slope intercept method looks like this. Solve, solve your equation for y. Plot the y intercept. from the y-intercept follow the slope to the next point. And then connect the dots. So take your equation, solve for y. Once you finish y, you'll have an entire equation. Find the y-intercept. And I'll show you how to find it in a second. And then from that y-intercept, follow the slope to the next point. The y-intercept method looks like this. We're not going to write any of this stuff down. We're not going to write any of this stuff down. Yep. Okay. Now, in here, you know you should see x and y, right? So this is the x, the y component. This is the x component. M, which we're going to define that later on. The next next section, actually, the m part represents the slope. The B part, well, also the sign of it, represents the y-intercept. Now you see why it's called the slope-intercept method? So let's look at our equation. 2x plus... 3y equals 9. So the first step is you have to solve for y. You have to get y by itself. What do you have to move first? Very good. Yes. So we have to get rid of the 2x first. Get rid of anything plus or minus to y. We subtract 2x from both sides. So we have 3y 
equals negative 2x plus 90. Then you got to do what? Remember, if 3 is negative, you have to change all the signs first. Since it's positive, we're okay with it. What do you do next? If you get the y by itself, what do you have to do? No. Nope. You're trying to get y by itself. Is y by itself? Why is it not by itself? It has a three in front of it. How do you get rid of the three? How is three connected to the y? Hmm? Yes, because they're multiplied. It can't be subtraction or addition because there's no plus or minus between there. This is multiplication. The opposite of multiplication is division. We divide both sides by three. Now, on the right-hand side, the three goes under each part separately. So it's y equals negative 2 over 3x plus 9 over 3. Simplify if you can. 2 over 3 can't be simplified. 9 divided by 3 is 3. Remember what I said, whatever's in front of your X is your slope. Whatever's by itself here is your Y intercept. So step two says plot the Y intercept. The Y intercept is at positive three. I'll put a dot there. Is that so far so good? Now, the slope. We haven't talked about this yet, but I'll give you a heads up for it. How do you define a slope? What is a slope in words? How, you, how would you describe a slope? Have you ever heard of rise over run? It's up if it's if the sign is positive, it's down if the sign is negative. And the bottom number is always positive, it always goes to the right. So whatever number is on top, if it's positive, you go up, if it's negative, you go down. And the bottom number, you always go to the right. So looking at our slope, since our slope is negative two over three, and we start from the y-intercept. So what do we do? Which direction do we go from the, from the y-intercept? Which direction do we go and how far? Look what we just talked about. The top number, is it positive or negative? So if it's negative, do you go up or down? How many spaces? So from here, you go down two spaces, one, two. The bottom number is always positive and it's always to the right. How many spaces? Three. So from here, one, two, three. There's a second dot connect them and there's your graph.
Okay, I'm gonna give you another one in slope intercept form. Let's graph it. We'll do two more. So we just get practice doing that. Okay, so look at these two. Y equals three over four X minus two and Y equals negative four X plus one. Go ahead and graph those two. Right. Look at the first one. According to the, the steps I gave you in the last page, you have to first put it in slope intercept form. Solve Y, check, it's there. Then you plot the what? The the y-intercept. The y-intercept in any equation is always the constant. The y-intercept is always the constant. So it's at negative two. Now, from that point, we follow the slope. What does the slope tell us to do? Do we go up or down? Why? Because it's positive, we go up. We go up how many spaces? Three spaces from this dot. One, two, three. And over how many? And it's always to the right. One, two, three, four. Because remember I said, always make the top number either positive or negative. The negatives will never be on the bottom. That's how we always move to the right and connect the dots. How about the second one? Where do we put our first dot? At the y-intercept. Follow the procedures. If you don't remember them, have it on a piece of paper next to you when you're doing these things. Refer to your steps. The first thing you do is plot the y-intercept, the constant, which is one. What's the slope? It has to be a fraction. The slope always has to be a fraction. So is this a fraction? Can we make it a fraction? How? Over one. Exactly, because every number is a fraction. So we go down four spaces from this dot. One, two, three, four, and over one. And there's our graph. I never done this on paper back in high school because I never do on Exactly. And that, that's that's not your fault, that's their fault. But yeah, this is this is how simple it really is. You know, do you need a calculator? No. Once you see the equation and how to do it, you want to do a couple more? Let's do a couple more. <laughs> how does it feel? Okay. I exactly. No, is <laughs> no. When I teach algebra, and that's the problem a lot of my students are having in all right. Both of these equations are solved for y already, so we can graph them. And same with the other one. What's the first thing you have to do? What's the first point you plot? 
the y-intercept. What's the y-intercept in this one? Zero, because there is nothing, so it's zero. And then from that point, where do you go? Go up, to go up to one, two, and then over how many? One, two, three, four, five. It's always going to be over. It's always going to be to the positive side. So there's your two, two dots, connect the dots, and here's a graph. And the second one. So on the y axis, positive three, one, two, three. And then what's my slope? One. Just one? One over one. One over one. It has to be a fraction. So from here, where do I go? One, one. one up and one over. And there's your graph. Hopefully it makes it a little bit easier for you. All right. Let's look at some other types of graphs, other types of lines. Here we're gonna look at horizontal and vertical lines. This is our x-axis, this is our y-axis. A horizontal line. What do we know about a horizontal line? What does it look like? Goes from left to right. That's your line, L1. And it only, the only axis it crosses is at that Y value. No matter what X you give me, Y is always going to be the same. So the equation of this line, let, let's say this point here is, let's say it's three. One, two, let's say it's three. So the equation of this line if the line's horizontal it only crosses the y axis and wherever it crosses that's what the equation of the line is because no matter what x you give me y is always going to be that value 3 If this is your equation let's look at a table Give me any value of x. Okay, zero, sorry, negative two, positive two, and 47. If I put x being zero in this equation, what does y become? What is y? Well, is there an X there? There's no place to put anything. So Y is always three. 
because there's no place to put an X in there. It's just Y equals three. So it's a, it's a horizontal line going through three on the Y axis. A vertical line looks like this. This is line two. One, two, three, four. Let's say it crosses through five. Since no matter what y value you have, x is always going to equal five. Because that's, that's, it doesn't go anywhere. You can only, here, here's a note. You can only have the variables that the line Crosses. I should have said, you can only have the variables of the axis that the line crosses. Of the axis that the line crosses. You can only have the variables of the, line, of the axis that the line crosses. Let's see what that means. In these examples, does this line ever cross the x-axis? No, nope. then, then it cannot have an x variable in it. This line never crosses the y-axis, so it cannot, we cannot have a y in there. If we have 2x plus 3y equals 6, if we have an equation that has two variables, then we know our line's going to cross both axes. So if the line crosses x and y, you have to have an x and y in your equation. If it doesn't, then it can only have the line, it can only have the axis of where the line crosses. So in this horizontal line, it only crosses the y, so the equation can only have the y variable. Make sense? It makes sense now. But yeah, that, that's very important though. You can only have the variables in which your line crosses the axis. So let's look, look, look at this example again. 2x plus 3y equals 6. If you're ever faced with an equation that you don't know where to put the dots, and you don't want to use the intercept method, you can create a table. This is the table. Tabular method. It's a table, tabular. When you use the table method, pick some values for the X and Ys and plug them in there. So. I want to, if X is zero, I want to look at that. If Y is zero, if X is negative two and Y is three. So what you have to do is you have to fill in these blanks. How do you fill in these blanks? This first one, when X is zero, so I put two times zero, three times Y is six. Now solve for Y. That's zero, three Y equals six. 
y equals two. So y equals two. Yeah, plug in the numbers that you have defined. If the table's not given, if the numbers aren't given to you, just make up some numbers. Small numbers, of course, and don't go too big. And the second one, I'm saying that y is zero. So 2x plus 3 times 0 equals 6. 3 times 0 disappears. 2x equals 6. Divide by 2, you get 3. Then I'm saying 2 times negative 2 plus 3y equals 6. Positive times negative is negative. Two times two is four. Plus three y equals six. We're solving for y, so what do we have to do? Move the four. Add four to both sides. So three y equals 10, divide by three. So when x is negative two, y is 10 over 3. And lastly, when y equals 3, solve for x. 3 times 3 is 9. Subtract 9 from both sides. 3x, 9 is bigger, so the answer is negative. 9 minus 6 is 3. x equals negative 1. Hopefully by now you're used to moving numbers equations around. That's what we've been doing in the previous chapters. What's that? Yeah. But 6 plus 4 is 10, and we have to divide by 3. Okay, can you guess why we would do something like this? Well, we can, this is in applications. If we were a business, we can see, well, what's happening? We could put these in, in increasing order and see what the numbers look like. Are we making money? Are we losing money? Are we gaining people, losing people? How does this relate to a graph? How does this table relate to a graph? Because remember, what is a point is made up of what? It's made up of an X and Y. It's an ordered pair. Yes, two variables, X and Y. That's what you have here. You have an X and you have a Y. You have an X and you have a Y. So each one of these, these are your ordered pairs. Both of these together make a point on your graph. Because you have the X and you have the Y component. Like how, how do the last answer is 2X plus 3 plus 3? Right, because that's what I said. I plug in 3. Where do you get 3X? Oh, I'm sorry. Ooh. Whoa, that's two. Good point. <laughs> when I'm wondering where you get three x from. That's a good good catch. So it's negative three over two. <laughs> good point. Good catch. I was speaking faster than I was writing. I'm sorry. Yeah, x is two. Good catch. <laughs> where did you get that? It's new math. <laughs> How does all this stuff feel so far? Is this straightforward? Just place practice? Because the next section we're going to talk about are slopes. Let's look at that. Let me see how much time we got. We got ah, plenty of time. We got 
an hour. Let's look at, let me, hold, let me put on pause.